Yeah, hey, Spencer, when uh, Hanniger hits that ball in the seventh, what was your uh, first reaction? Did you think that was going to go down the line, or did you not even have time to? <laughs> oh, that ball was hit so hard, I didn't have time to think. It was, it was hit, and it was already in Candy's glove, that one hopper. I was just like, like I said, I, that was kind of one of those moments. Because I remember even um, my freshman year at South Carolina, I remember, uh, uh, was it Christian? Maybe Christian Walker. Um, I can't, but he had a couple really hot smoke ground balls or line drives right at third base. And it was kind of just one of those. And it was just like hit right at him. Kenny made a heck of a play. Just that was the kind of moment I was like, all right, I think this is my night. I'm just going to keep going and hopefully I can finish it. You talked about facing Henniger that next time in the ninth. Was there a little bit of an energy bump there? Because, I, you know, your, your fastball looked like it was winning a little bit and then it picked up. You got to 95 on that final pitch. Did you kind of feel like one of those Scherzer moments where, you know, your final pitches were, you know, were kind of your hardest? Oh, for sure. There's definitely that. It, there's always a little bit extra that I can reach back for, but on a night like tonight, don't really know exactly what I have and just trying to continue to make pitches, stay within yourself. But that last, that last at bat was not only did I want to make my nastiest pitches, but I wanted to execute them as, as perfectly as possible. Um, and I was able to, like I said, that first sinker down and in was a good pitch to get ahead and strike. And I threw one of my better sliders all night. And then that, that last four seamer kind of up and away, kind of cut a little bit. It was exactly what I wanted to do with it. I just threw it as hard as I could. Whatever I had left, was emptying the tank on that one. I can only imagine the frustration when your season got delayed you know, with, with the COVID near the end of spring training, right, as you felt like you were getting ready. To, how, how sweet is this to come back, you know, basically within a month after you, you know, you get back up and, and to be able to not only do this, but, but to go the distance in, in a pretty physically taxing game. Yeah, I mean, I know, it's it's just such a sweet moment. Um, like I said, I wouldn't change anything. Going through COVID, all that other stuff. I mean, it kind of sucked at the time, but it kind of is what it is. I'm, I'm all right now. And like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade a, a no-hitter for having COVID. I mean, that, that's an easy trade for me to make for sure. Thanks, Spencer. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, next we have Brad Galley from Channel 7. Spencer, you said on the broadcast uh, some of the guys were telling you after the first inning that you were going to throw a no-hitter. Who there was, was that? There was just a, a group of guys, fans, right behind the dugout. And like I said, I, I got through the first inning, and they were like, oh, are you the guy pitching tonight? I was like, I was like, yeah. Like, are you throwing a no-hitter? It was like the first inning. I had, it was like I'd already got through. I was like, it's like, all right, man. And then got out there and actually finished. It was, it was pretty cool. And I, I was like – I was like, you guys called it. <laughs> it was funny. Your, your last outing, um, I mean, even like Jack was saying on the broadcast tonight, which is pretty obvious, he goes, Spencer looks serious, which is clear. I mean, this is your job. This is what you do. But could you feel, not necessarily a no-hitter building, but could you feel performances like this starting to build up, especially like Jason was asking you, now that you were getting your body right? Yeah, I think I think um, just kind of getting through the whole COVID thing, kind of getting through the – the little, you know, inconsistencies or whatever that you normally get through in spring training, kind of had to work through that pretty quickly. Only had a few weeks to kind of come back. And then first start felt good and kind of scuffled a little bit. But um, we had the off day last week. I was able to work on some stuff. My dad actually drove up and we were able to play catch on the off day and worked on a couple of things. It definitely helped um, for the next outing. He said, I didn't didn't feel nearly as uh, connected mechanically warming up today, but just made sure to, like I said, if I didn't have my best stuff physically, I was going to make sure I had my best stuff mentally because I knew I needed – I knew, I knew I needed it, and um, fortunately, my stuff kind of clicked in, too, after that, kind of right, right, right around the end of the first, after the first and the second, just was able to just kind of stay locked in after that. Is your dad totally going to take credit for this no-hitter after coming I up? I hope he does. He should, but <laughs> no, nah, he, he wouldn't do that. He, he'll give all the all the credit to me, but he definitely he definitely helped me last week for sure. Congrats, man. Congrats on getting both belts. <laughs> Thank you. Right, next, we'll go to Evan Petzold from the Free Press. Hey, Spencer, congratulations. Um, you know, earlier you mentioned, you know, beating yourself at times. Maybe that's, you know, part of the mental game of all of this. I mean, how difficult has that been for you at, at times? Um, it's definitely been a challenge. Uh, I think I think you can be your own worst enemy sometimes. Um, I don't want to be too negative towards myself because I think that's all part of the, the growing process too, learning how to master the mental game and um, stay consistent with that. But that was definitely one of my bigger hurdles it wasn't, it wasn't as much the stuff. I always kind of had the stuff. It was more the consistency. And I said, a lot of that's consistency with my body and my mechanics and stuff like that. 
So some of that's definitely a physical thing, but then there's a whole other side of the mental game, um, keeping your mind right, keeping your mindset right, knowing that even if you don't have your best stuff, you can still attack and still get the job done. Things like that would have um, maybe rattled me earlier in my career a few years ago or whatever in the minors, uh, first in the big leagues. But um, I think I've matured some now to where like, okay, even if I don't have my best stuff, even if I have my C, my C stuff, I can still get outs, you know, and just um, not letting that affect me too much. Like, obviously, I'd rather have my A-plus stuff or my A-minus stuff or my A stuff every day. Um, don't want to have a B, B-plus, B-minus, or even a C stuff day, but it's just going to happen. So it's kind of just whatever you got that day, you just like, okay, that's what I have. I'm going to work with it. And a lot of times it ends up showing up later in the game anyway, kind of click back in, again, you kind of get that, that mind-body connection. Um, kind of locks back in after after kind of figuring it out. And so I just got to stick with it. And with that being said, too, I mean, we've seen you, you know, develop and, and grow in that way. You know, it was 17 losses, you know, a few years ago and then a huge step forward last year. I mean, what do you think that this does for for your career and, and your confidence? I definitely don't think it's going to hurt it. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Appreciate it.